Now it's my pleasure to introduce the next person who will be representing the La Mirinda area in the State Senate uh, starting December 1st. Assemblymember Mark Desaulnier was, uh, won his election yesterday and is our Senator-elect for this area. And it's now my pleasure to ask Senator-elect Desaulnier to come forward. Thank you. Well, this is really, first of all, it's wonderful as someone with the last name Desaulnier to be in Lafayette by a statue to Lafayette, a great man. Um, and it's also, I just can't tell you, the last few weeks for many of us has been wonderful and joyous, but it's also a little bit surreal. I, I actually had trouble finding a parking space for this event the night after election. Usually people are sick of talking about politics the night after election, so that's a really wonderful sign to those of us who have held office and believe in civic engagement in this democracy, who believe that being an American isn't an entitlement, it's a responsibility both to one another, um, to future generations, and to the legacy that past generations have given us. So the last few days for many of us have been truly remarkable. Yesterday I was at an event that the Central Committee put on, the Democratic Central Committee and all the clubs in Walnut Creek, and I was to introduce Congresswoman Tauscher. But right after the speech uh, by President-elect Obama, how cool is that? I mean, just to say that, after that incredible speech to feel after all we've been through as a country um, during the last eight years and to get this wonderful sense of redemption um, was just really something else. And I'm sort of, as I hope you are, uh, whatever your political positions are, really enjoying this rebirth of democracy in the United States of America. It's really a wonderful time to be an American and be alive. I'm supposed to speak for a moment about uh, coattails and the effect of the election on um, down the ticket. Now there's a lot of speculation about when the election would be called and the effect of the election in California on Prop 8 and on other propositions and also on the Assembly and the Senate. Uh, na um, Nancy mentioned that we need to change the, the requirement for supermajority to pass legislature in California. Many of you know that we are one of only three states that requires a supermajority of both houses to pass a budget. For those of us who have been through the budget process, clearly to us that is the number one problem. Um, the other two states are Arkansas and Rhode Island, don't have a lot to do with us, but one thing they, they have that we aspire to as Democrats, they have a supermajority of Democrats in both houses, so they don't have the issue of um, this gridlock we have in Sacramento. So we were hoping that we could pick up at least three um, votes in the assembly. And Joan Buchanan, wherever you are, thank you for all your hard work. Joan Buchanan became the hero to many of us who, when she took the place of the only Republican member of either the state delegation or the federal delegation, when she took the place of uh, termed out Assemblymember Guy Houston. So thank you, Joan Buchanan. I know she's here today. She did a great job. But it looks like we will pick up on net probably three, which means we're still three short in the assembly. We are 106 votes short of picking up one more Senate seat, so that'll take a while to see if we pick that up. So we'll still be short. So we will have to go back and compromise. We tried to compromise this last session um, by starting our negotiations by going that we would take cuts that would make out amount, an amount of half of the deficit. Uh, we're going to have a 10 to $12 billion deficit that we're going to be dealing with starting tomorrow. We're going to be called back in a special session. Uh, many of us feel that a combination of cuts and some kind of revenue enhancements are the things to do to not cut the safety net further and not cut as much as the governor suggested is $4 billion to education, which we think is completely unacceptable. So the down, yes. I mean, in a, in a state that had the finest public, in, public education, arguably in the world 30 years ago, both kindergarten through 12 in the University of California and Cal State system, the community college system, to have us now ranked amongst the worst in the United States, tied with Mississippi in per capita spending, is not acceptable enough. And then to suggest that we're going to spend a cut $4 billion more clearly is not the American way to, to empower future generations. So, did, it, did Obama have coattails? Well, he clearly had coattails in the United States Senate and the House of Representatives. Did he have here in California? I think he did 
but the pundits will evaluate that, I think, in the next few weeks. Did he have it both to the legislative level and to local government? I think he did, but I think probably the most encouraging thing, and I will leave you with this, um, you know, a former California governor who was president of the United States, Ronald Reagan, used to like to say, are you better off now than you were four years ago? And I always thought that was the wrong question, and I think we're at that point of answering the question, asking the question the right way. And it should be, are we better off four years from now? And I think we will be, because I think what the American public has learned through our difficult period since 9-11, um, in two wars, and now what's going on in Wall Street is that this struggle between the American individual and the community that is America, which is part of our national heritage, is a natural struggle that we should embrace and admire. But in a lot of our view, it's gone way too far to the individual. And we have to, and I think this is the message from yesterday, and I hope it's the message for the next four to eight years, is that Americans are about Americans and not about Americans as individuals. So it's delightful to be here with you this evening, the day after a very historical moment in our country. And now our requirement is just to go ahead, and for those of us who are in government, to engage in um, that, that trip that is about we as Americans, not I or you as an American. So thank you for being here. I'm delighted to be here. I'm delighted to represent you. I will represent you for the next four years, and I'm looking forward to many events like this in La Mirinda. Thanks. What a great night. What a historic night. And as you just heard, you know, it's not just the national uh, pro problems that we have. We have issues here in California. And as we get ready to close up tonight, you know, think of what President-elect Obama is facing. The economy, Iraq, Afghanistan, our education system, our broken infrastructure. There are a lot of challenges, a lot of things we need to do. And our politicians cannot do what needs, to, what needs to be done. Our leaders cannot make the decisions that they need to make to improve our country, to do what we need to do for my, our children. And that's one of the reasons I am doing this. One of the reasons I do the work I do is for my kids who have been here tonight, Eric and Nate and my wife Carrie who are out there. That's what this is about. What are we leaving for our next generation? How are we a we and not just an I and a you? And so I hope that after an exhausting time, and I know a lot of you made a lot of calls, locked, walked a lot of precincts, donated a lot of money, but if we stop now, President-elect Obama, Assemblymember-elect Skinner, Senator-elect Desaulnier, Assemblymember-elect Buchanan, and their colleagues are not going to be able to do what needs to be done. So we need you to take a little break, take some time to rest. But when these issues start getting discussed again, when these topics come up, they need your support. They need your phone calls. They need your letters. They need your encouragement as they tackle the issues that this country faces today. It was an historic election, not just because of who won. And thank goodness Barack Obama won last night. But it's an, it is an historic election because of the challenges we face. And this country elects people when it needs to, to meet these challenges. I believe we did that last night. I believe we're going to make these changes. And everything that we can do as La Mirinda, I hope you'll be there with us to join us. So thank you for being here. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Thank you, everybody, for coming out.